All right, let's get started. It is the wedding season and there are newlyweds all around us. But if you haven't, as a couple, combined your finances and started making a plan together, then you're a newlywed as far as I'm concerned. On this show today, we are going to give you a quick guidebook on how you as a couple should and must combine the strengths and the weaknesses of your financial plans and come up with one plan that will help you achieve all of your goals in the short and the long term. Remember, there are also tax benefits that you can take as a couple that will also save you a lot of money. Take a look at this guide and then come back and I'll give you an email ID where you can send in questions you have about your plans. Marriage is all about starting a life with someone special. It is also about sharing responsibilities both familial and financial. The tiniest financial hiccup can dent the strongest marriage. So after you take your wedding vows, you need to make some vows of financial commitment. Step 1. You need to take stock of your combined financial assets and liabilities. Calculate how much your financial income will be and then list out all the loans and their EMIs. Combine your individual cash flows and first pay off the most expensive loan. Knock off the loans which are high cost and which are giving you no tax breaks. Uh, that's the number one thing to do. If there is a loan which is giving you a tax break, so let's say a housing loan in the property whether you are living in or an invested property, then one needs to calculate whether the interest amount that I am paying is within the limit of uh, the tax free uh, uh, within the tax free limit and in that case yes it may be advantageous to keep that loan running as long as i know that i have cash flow to repay that loan step two begin your financial plan by setting aside a contingency fund so you don't eat into your investments in an emergency situation since they are newly wed they may not have figured out how much is their actual expenses and to that extent if they were to keep aside contingency fund which is equivalent to about one and a half two months of their salary uh, that should be fine however within six to eight months time they should figure out what is the actual cost and then align it to the expenses step three get adequate insurance to cover both of you whether it's medical or life insurance don't give up on any individual policies you may have instead buy an additional joint policy that will give you additional coverage Remember, the premium on a family floater is lower than an individual health cover. Especially if you are newlywed and you intend, uh, as is the case for most uh, couples, that you intend to have children later on. Uh, you could also, and if the health insurance is not sufficient, you could look at policies okay, that will also cover your children automatically when they are born and a small amount for pregnancy expenses although that cannot be the reason for buying a separate health insurance policy uh, but a joint policy that covers children automatically at birth step four the nominee in all your financial assets needs to be changed to benefit your spouse remember the nomination on shares you invest in will override your will Typically when the assets are getting distributed after death, which is why you have a nomination, uh, what will uh, first apply is if you have a will. If you do not have a will, then the personal law comes into play. And as per personal law, uh, the spouse will uh, have a significant share of the, uh, you know, the, of the deceased spouse's uh, holdings. So it is really very important then that uh, the nomination is, the, is that of the spouse. Step 5. To avoid financial conflicts, you should put together your short-term and long-term goals. And depending on your time horizon, come up with a financial plan with appropriate allocation to debt and equity. If the goals are short-term, okay, you need to invest primarily in uh, risk-free debt instruments. If they are a little long-term, you do a mix of debt and equity. Okay, If it is very long-term, you do again a mix of debt and equity but more preponderance to equity rather as, as it becomes longer term the proportion to equity becomes longer. For your short term goals you can invest in post office savings, bank deposits and recurring deposits. For long term goals invest heavily in equity investments like mutual funds or stocks and for your retirement the national pension system is an ideal investment. 
and finally plan your taxes as a couple. Your home is the largest financial asset and if either of you is paying off a home loan, you both can benefit from it. Being married is a big advantage. You are now eligible for a joint home loan which entitles you to a higher loan amount. Both of you can claim tax deductions on this joint home loan which effectively doubles your tax savings. As a married couple, your wealth allowances also increase. Whether it's jewelry or real estate, you now can own more assets without attracting wealth tax on it. A well-married financial plan is essential for every successful marriage. Once your financial future is secure, you can truly have the happily ever after you've always wanted.